Hi everyone, this is Grace, and today I'll be walking you through how I made this beach day set. <laughs> so let's go. Sidebar, this is my second time recording this. I recorded the entire thing and finished it and realized that I had recorded the entire thing on mute. <laughs> Maybe if I was more sophisticated in my audio editing, I would know how to like retract that. But here we are. So this is my second attempt. I don't script any of these, so I don't know what I said last time. <laughs> we'll see what I say this time. So for starters, this is my beach day online class. Um, if you want <clears throat> to, excuse me, learn more about the class itself. Check out the description link. Um, there's also a sped up version of this set. This is my real time with voiceover, but if you want something a bit faster, check out the sped up satisfying version as well. Like I said, this is my beach day class. I ended up doing three summer classes this year, which was not at all the plan, but when I sat down to decorate, I mean, sorry, to, to plan out my sets, I have um, an app on my iPad where I sketch out all of my sets. No, it's not. Is it Procreate? No, it's not the fancy one. It's like this super basic notes, not super basic, but it's more of a notes app. It's called Notability. I don't know why I'm talking about this, but I've been using it for years and it's just like my happy place. It's easy. I'm, I know that Procreate, I could look, my sketches would look way more professional, but here we are. Um, so I, I ended up doing three because as I was sitting down and coming up with these designs, I realized I had three very different concepts in my head and I hadn't done a beginner summer one yet. Um, I love doing one shape especially, but at least one consistency summer sets. So I have a, a frozen treats class, which is also one consistency, but um, I hadn't done a circle one yet. And so I was like, well, I have to do a beginner summer, obviously, which I did do. And then as I was coming up with my, my like beach ocean ideas, I realized I had kind of under the sea imagery and I had beach imagery, which like you can definitely combine into one set. And a lot of people who decorate cookies do that. Um, but for me, I was like, well, these feel like two very different sets and I want to make them into two very different sets. So that's where I came up with Under the Sea and Beach Day. And since I was launching three at a time, I was like, okay, these all need to be drastically different. So one of the ways I made those different is that they're all different skill levels. So beginner summer is obviously beginner. The Under the Sea is advanced beginner. And then this Beach Day I'm calling advanced beginner slash intermediate, like this skill right here. This is called brush embroidery. This is definitely a more advanced skill in my not so humble opinion. Um, the OG on this skill is Amber of Sweet Ams. I learned this like 15 years ago from her. I do mine a little bit differently because of the paintbrush that I use. Um, a lot of people will do like a, th a thin, not thin, but like not as wide flat brush, but you can see here, I like to use an angle brush to each their own. Um, but sidebar, well, I guess that ship has sailed <laughs> on the brush embroidery. I teach all of these skills at length in the classes. Um, but then brush embroidery, a couple of keys you want to use at least, at least somewhere between a soft and a medium peak, if not a medium peak. Um, I think, I think that the white in this is more like a soft peak, which is fine. Um, ideally, it would be a medium peak, but like I don't like to make too many different consistencies for all of my classes. I'm really conscious of how many colors, how many consistencies. I'm not going to make an extra consistency unless it's really, really worth it. Um, so I made a few of those decisions <clears throat> throughout the class, which I'll tell you about. And this one here, just a sidebar, is a very classic beach scene. I did not take this out of my head. Um, in the cookie decorating world, like this little beachfront thing, very common. I did the flip-flops. I decided on adding a little um, towel here, which you will see in another cookie. 
excuse my sniffling. I just went outside and took a walk and I think maybe my allergies are like next level. By the way, did you see that I did the thongs on the, um, <laughs> the flip flops wrong? Yeah. I honestly, I didn't notice until someone pointed out when I was posting this set, like I had finished the, cl the class. I had launched the class. I was sharing this on social media and people were like, uh, did you notice that the straps on the flip flop are the wrong way? And I was like, Oh my God, that happens to me every once in a while. Um, it's not something that I'm going to redo an entire set for, but I did add a note in the class and I was like, BT dubs y'all. <laughs> I did this the wrong way. Um, you know, we're all human. We all make little mistakes like that. It's fine. So uh, this next one is an umbrella scene. So I want to talk about the design approach with this set. When I originally designed this set, I had, I don't know, eight to 10 different designs. And I actually mocked them all up. And it was everything you see here. Plus, I had a beach ball um, a beach bag, a wave, like an ocean wave. I'm trying to remember what other ones I had. I might've had a shell in there or something. No, did I? No, I don't know. Whatever. I had some other like individual items. And when I put them all together, I was like, this just doesn't look like a cohesive set. Like I had all of these intricate beach scenes and then I had these random like things like the beach ball, the beach bag. And as I was looking at it, I was like, you know what? What if I just took the scenes from this set and made that the set, which is why there are only five cookies in this set because all of these cookies are very detailed. And something I mentioned in the workbook and in the class is that if you're going to make more than one batch of dough of these cookies, I would not recommend doing just these designs because they're all so intricate. Now you might be like, then Grace, like, why did you do such intricate designs for this class? And it's because this is really bringing the intermediate with the level of intricacy of all of these designs. And I wanted to bring the intermediate with this class. Um, this this is truly one of my more like class classes. I would say maybe like the plant babies one is also kind of like that in the sense that um, this is not the kind of cookie set that you're going to want to double, triple, quadruple as is. So if you are going to, like if you're making these for an event or an order or something, what I would recommend doing is picking one to three of these designs and even just picking one of them, making that the centerpiece, the focal point of your set. Um, because the way I design these is that each cookie is supposed to be its own little beach day vignette. So they can stand alone. Um, that's very intentional in the way that I designed them. Um, what was I going to say? Stand alone. Oh, so pick one two, maybe three, but I'd say like one to two and then pair them with very simple, um, shapes along with it. They can be on circles, but they could also be the actual cookie cutters themselves. Um, cause something that's shaped like, you know, a pair of sunglasses is a lot easier to decorate than freehanding sunglasses. Um, that's the other thing that is challenging about this set is that it's all in a circle. So everything is freehanded. And if that is not your jam, that's fine. But this is the way we're rolling with this class. Um, so like for this one with this, um, umbrella, it's also going to have a sand bucket and a shovel soon. So some of the things you could do to pair with this, you could do an umbrella cookie. You could do a wave cookie, like a ocean wave. You could do a sand bucket. You could do a shovel. Um, you could do a cookie that's like just textured with sand. <laughs> that's really simple. Um, sunglasses, a sun, you know, anything that kind of gives beach vibes, super simple to pair with that. But then this cookie will really be the star of the set. Now, something else to note about the design approach on this set is that if I could change anything, it would be to add one more color, um, like purple, for example. I think I actually saw someone add purple in another set. Um, or even pink, there's another cookie in here where like having pink would have been a really nice addition. Um, there were already enough colors. Like in this one alone, we have blue, white, 
tan, green, yellow, and we're about to have orange. So that's six colors already. When I'm designing classes, <clears throat> a big part of my approach to this is I think about the end user, the person at home who has to buy all of these supplies, who has to spend all the time prepping. And I know that this hobby is like time consuming and expensive enough. So when I put a class together, even one of my more advanced classes, I still am really t intentional. Like if I add another consistency, it's because it makes a difference and it's worth it. If I add another color, it's because it makes a difference and it's worth it. If I add some sort of like extra um, tool, doodad, whatever, it's because it's worth it. The only extra thing from this set other than icing is the paintbrush for the brush embroidery, um, which you could... <laughs> Just skip the brush embroidery if you wanted to, and you can just do like some squiggly white doodads <laughs> on that ocean part. Um, but I think that's a fun addition to this set. And yeah, when you use the paintbrush to like paint on the backgrounds, you could just use, you know, like a kitchen knife. Not exactly the same, but it'll do. So other intermediate sets though, because another way that I approach intermediate is it's not only a more advanced skill level, but I see it also as more investment in time and resources. So you'll have more colors, you'll have more consistencies. Um, these are the sets that I will do like luster dust. Like none of my beginner classes have luster dust or even advanced beginner. Um, Cause advanced luster dust requires <laughs> so much extra stuff that you have to buy just to be able to use it. Um, ex like I do some sprinkles in other classes, but like, what else do I do that's super extra? I guess paint brushes. Anyway, so of all my intermediate ish ish classes, this would be one of my um, cooler ones in the sense that you're really just working with royal icing. And I would call myself a royal icing purist of sorts. Like there are a lot of people out there who are experimenting with fondant and wafer paper and blibbity blobbity bloop. And I'm like, y'all, I'm just rolling with <laughs> the royal icing. That's just how I do. Um, so if you're looking for that work, like learning how to work with that extra stuff, it, it's I'm not your girl and that's totally fine. There are plenty of other cookie decorators out there who are amazing, um, who can show you the ropes there. So what else? Can I, oh, this is the cookie here where I really wish that I had... Um, like some pink or even reddish color on the bottom to give it a little more depth to this sunset, but is good enough. That's why I didn't add another color to this. I was just thinking, oh, and I had to do green because you're going to see palm trees in a minute. And like, obviously those have to be green. The scribe I'm using here, by the way, is my favorite standard scribe. It's from Borderlands Bakery. I don't know if she still sells it. I know I begged her one at one point to keep selling it because it was my favorite and I wanted to recommend it to everyone. What I like about it is that um, that heart rests very ergonomically on my hand. I don't know if it's just my hand because I have big hands, but I'm 5'11". That's why I have big hands. Okay. <laughs> Not just abnormally big hands. Um, something else that I did in this set is that there are I think every cookie except for one has water in it. Is that true? I think so. And I wanted to do all the water in as many different ways as I can. Because another, another approach that I have to my classes is that I want to show you as many different ways to do things as possible. So if I'm going to have, you know, four different iterations of water, like I want to show you four different ways to do water. And that's also one of the beauties too, of course, of my one shape sets like this one, where I can show you how much you can achieve with just one shape, with a set of consistencies and colors and, you know, you're in business. So this one here, obviously I did a little wet on wet situation um, there's another wet on wet at the end. What do we do in the first one? The first one, um, had the brush embroidery white caps on top. Um, the umbrella one, we painted the water in the background. I like to do that, um, for visual variety, for also like icing variety. It just, 
it just adds a little something different, a little bit of texture, a little bit of dimension, which I like. This green here is one application where if I was really living large with my consistencies, I probably would have made a medium peak because a medium peak is going to hold its shape better with this kind of zigzag movement. Um, this is a soft peak here. It's good enough. Is it perfect? No. But is it good enough? Yes. And I just roll with good enough because <laughs> there's enough to worry about here. And by the way, those lines I piped, those were just guides so that I knew where to pipe all of the, I don't know, what are these called? Arms, leaves, fronds. Is that a fr frond? Palm frond? I don't know. <laughs> and then I added the little coconuts on top. Um, someone complained on some platform. This was way too much icing. And I'm like, cool, that's fine. but. I like it. <laughs> um, a lot of people have opinions about icing amounts on cookies, which I just think is mildly funny. Um, yeah, that's one of the reasons, too, that I like to do lemon icing, um, because I just think it adds so much more depth to the experience. If that was just a, a wad of like plastic flavored vanilla icing, I would probably feel you on that. Um that is an instance where it would probably be nice if I was working with a Frankenfrosting. Frankenfrosting is um, when Frankenfrosting, the original idea is that it's a marriage of royal icing and glaze. The reason for that is that people love the soft bite of glaze, but you can't do as much with glaze as you can with royal icing. Royal icing can achieve so many more consistencies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Although it is surprising if you are an expert with glaze, what you can achieve sidebar, but generally speaking, glaze is like one consistency. So at some point someone came up with frankenfrosting, which the original recipe was to actually make glaze and royal icing separately and then mix them together. But now, nowadays what people do is they just add some corn syrup to royal icing. And what that does is it gives it the soft bite, soft herb bite of glaze. Um, but it's, it still functions the same as royal icing. What you have to keep in mind, though, is if you add too much glaze, then it will not function the same <laughs> as your beloved royal icing, um, and it will not dry hard enough either. One of the real benefits of royal icing and what people really rely on is that it does dry hard so that you can package it, so that you can... Um, you know, lay them on top of each other in a box or something on top of each other, but like next to each other. But if you have something that's too fragile, um, you know, you're not going to be able to move these things as easily and they're going to get crushed way more easily. And it's just going to be sad, bad news bears. <laughs> so anywho, um, this here, I just really liked this design. Um, number one tip with this towel is to use a very small scribe like I'm using here. This is the PME one. It's in my Amazon shop, but beware. There is one that is thicker than this. It's I think it actually says like thick or something on the listing, but it's kind of hidden. This is the smaller one. It doesn't say anything. <laughs> um, so use a smaller scribe. Also keeping in mind that the number of lines you do um, and the number of pulls just increases the difficulty. So if you want to decrease the difficulty on this, do fewer white lines, do fewer pulls, all that good stuff. Um, this technique though, this design element, this wet on wet in particular is like one of the very first things I learned. One of the very first things I think everyone should learn. It's why it's in a lot of my beginner classes. Um, being able to do a wet on wet line pull is just very basic, very fundamental. Um, there are two ways you can do it here. I pulled in both directions, but you can also pull in one direction. I did that on the mermaid tail in the under the sea class. Um, what I like about this design in particular, so we painted on the sand and by the way, that was a squiggle of piping consistency, soft peak and the flood. And that's because I wanted like a little bit of texture from the piping. But if I had done the whole thing in piping, it would have taken forever to paint that. And often the icing will like dry out before you can paint the whole surface. So adding a little bit of the flood allows it to cover the surface more easily. Now this here is my absolute favorite part of this whole set or well, maybe it is the whole set, <laughs> at least with this cookie. So I added these little shells on the side. Um, you're going to see what we're going to do with that white one in a second. This is just a little pressure pipe situation. 
for that shell. Then this is a little pressure piped, um, what is this called? Starfish. Thank you, Grace. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, here we go. So take your scribe. You only want to let this dry for a couple of minutes, if that. If you let it dry too much, you're just going to crack the entire surface. You just want it to have enough of a crust so that you can make these indentations, which you can see a little bit better in a minute with the final cookie. And you make a sand dollar out of this. I mean, like, how cool is that? Like, what? Like, what? I was really proud of myself when I thought of doing that. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, this is the last cookie in the set. So this is the... Um, uh, Oh my God, a sunflower? No, it's not a sunflower. It's a sunset. Thank you, Grace. Sidebar. Um, if I had to pick a least favorite from this set, it probably would be this one just because it feels much more like basic and standard than the other ones that I've done. Although it is not as, it's harder than it looks. Um, and by the way, I usually put my least favorite cookie at the end of a set. <laughs> Or at least the cookie that I think will be the least liked by the people watching it. So if you ever wonder about the order, I always start with the most impressive cookie or the one that's like the most satisfying to watch. So anywho, we do use an edible marker in this set. And if you follow me for a minute, you know that I only use edible markers when absolutely necessary. So this is an instance where I think it is extremely helpful. I would just be careful to not marker all the way to the edge because if you don't cover the edge of your cookie super well with your um, piping icing, then, um, uh, then you'll have like edible marker poking out the edges, which is not an ideal look. Okay. So this is just going to be one massive wet on wet situation. And because there's so much to this design, we are doing once like one color at a time and you'll see me work through this. The key here with this part is to make sure you're getting the colors into all the corners, which you really can't do with the tip of a piping bag. So you'll see me do that with the yellow as well. And the reason that you pipe the lines is to keep the icing in place, honestly. <laughs> it just allows you to do this kind of intricate design so much more easily. Because if you piped that orange and didn't have the lines in place, it would just flood out. I always prefer, if possible, to flood right up against the previous color. I really try not to have to mess with my scribe too much after I have piped the different sections. <laughs> Just using my scribe to get these into all the cute little corners. Now, the good thing about this design is that if you didn't do the best job at the wet on wet, no problema, because we're gonna cover that with piping consistent or yeah with <laughs> with outlines or with lines whatever you want to call them and I did not wait for the yellow part to dry at all because we're going to end up covering that center line with um a piping consistency anyway so this is the last but certainly not least way that I did water this actually might be hmm tied for top two favorite ways that I did water in this set. There's a bit of a method to my madness, but also not at the same time. So I start off just by piping lines, which actually looks kind of cool. And you could like leave it like this, even if you wanted. And then you take a scribe and then I just do swirls and I alternate direction. And in this case, I was also alternating which line I was doing it on. It doesn't really matter. Do whatever floats your boat. Um, you just kind of want to mess the lines up. That's just the goal. A. You can do as little or as much as makes your heart happy. 
let that crust over. You can see that I um, <clears throat> shoved my thumb. I don't know if I shoved my thumb or if I dropped this cookie. One of the two. So that upper left corner is oopsie doodle, not so great looking. Um, and in this case, it was the last cookie of this design. Excuse me. So I did not have the option to... Um, I mean, I guess I could have redone this from the beginning, but y'all, I don't have the patience for that. <laughs> so anyway, um, the key to some good line piping like this, use a soft peak for starters. Um, you don't want your, the tip of your bag to be too big. You want to lift the bag off the sur surface of the cookie, even if it's just like an eighth of an inch or a couple millimeters, like you need to lift the icing off to get a nice clean line. And on these edges, this is my next level thing. I like to take a scribe and actually chop off the ends of the lines. And that gives this beautiful waterfall effect. This is not necessary, but especially if you get really lumpy ends of your lines, this could make it look really nice. I don't know why that photo is so large, <laughs> but there we go. That is the end of this beach day set. As always, I hope y'all enjoyed watching this. I hope you learned a thing or two. No, I'm not from the South, but I just say y'all anyway, I'm actually from the North, <laughs> Northeast to be specific. Anyway, um, thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching. Definitely check out the class. Whoops. If you're interested and I'll see y'all next time. Have a sweet day.